Welcome to Ethical Hacking with AI. Episode 1 starts now. This video is not just a tutorial. It's the beginning of a complete playlist called Ethical Hacking with AI. Today we'll focus on the setup, and in the upcoming videos, we'll use AI to perform reconnaissance, scanning, and even bug bounty techniques. Today, you will set up Kaylee Linux, Gemini CLI, and the ChatGPT API to get AI assistance SGPT for ethical hacking. Later, we'll take help from more AI tools, and all upcoming videos will be added to this playlist. By the end of this playlist, you'll be able to analyze vulnerabilities using AI and even write professional bug bounty reports. This video is episode one, and this is where your journey begins, from a beginner ethical hacker to an AI-assisted security professional. Many people use AI to learn hacking, but they don't learn it in a structured way. In this playlist, I'll guide you step by step. Today is only about the setup, and in the next episode, we'll jump into real reconnaissance. If you skip this setup, you won't properly understand the next nine videos in this playlist. That's why episode one is extremely important. This video is created for educational and ethical purposes only. Do not engage in any unauthorized hacking or violate any laws. I will also provide the websites where you can practice safely while learning. First, open any web browser. In the search bar, type Kali Linux Download. Now click on the official Kali Linux website. It should be the first result. Once the website opens, look for the section that says Virtual Machines. Click on it. Here we need the version for VirtualBox since we'll use Kali inside VirtualBox. Click on the download icon under VirtualBox. After clicking, the download will start automatically. Please wait. The time depends on your internet speed. When the download is complete, go to your downloads folder. You can extract the file in the same folder or anywhere you want. I'm extracting it right here. It may take a few minutes to finish. Once it's extracted, open the new folder. Inside the folder, find the file with the VirtualBox icon and double click it. VirtualBox will open automatically. Now let's go to the settings. From there, click on System, and under Base Memory, set your RAM. I'm giving it around 8 GB. Next, go to the Processor tab, and assign 3 CPUs. Once everything is set, click on the Start button. After clicking Start, Kali Linux will open automatically. You don't need to install anything separately. This is the quickest and easiest way to run Kali Linux. It also saves time when you need to work with Linux again and again, especially during hacking tasks. Instead of installing it every time, this method is much smarter. Also, when working in Linux, using Tor IP can give you better privacy and avoid any issues. To log in, the username and password are both. Kali, all in lowercase. Kali will also go full screen automatically. If it doesn't, just resize the window a bit and it will switch to full screen. Now let's switch to the root user from the terminal. sudo suit password Kali. By default, you're logged in as a normal user. To enable root access, type this command, sudo passbuck root. Now you'll be asked to create a new password. Type the same password twice. If everything is correct, now switch to root using. Then log in using username, root password, the one you just said. Next, let's update Kaylee Lennons from the terminal. First type, wami, it will show your current user. Now, update the system. Now type the command sudo apt update. Its purpose is to update the package list by refreshing repository information and downloading the latest package lists from all configured software repositories on your system. It also checks whether any new packages or updates are available. The command sudo apt upgrade is used to upgrade installed packages. It installs all updated packages based on the list obtained from apt update. This keeps your system up to date by applying security updates, bug fixes, and new features. It also replaces older versions of packages with their newer versions. If you face any issues up to this point, post on Facebook group with EP1 Topic. Once our Kali Linux setup is complete, we'll proceed to install the Gemini CLI. Now to install Gemini CLI, type the following command, sudo apt install Gemini CLI. Type Gemini CLI -h in Kali Linux. It will display the help menu or command usage guide where you can see all available options 
flags, and command syntax. If you type the Gemini-CLI command and press enter, it will prompt for Google account authentication. To log in with Google, simply press 1 on your keyboard. It will automatically open the Google account login page. From here, sign in with your Gmail account by entering your email and then your password. Once authentication succeeds, you'll see the Gemini CLI interface in the terminal. After that, you can ask it anything. Here you can see the message input section has appeared. Now you can type any message you want. I've given a prompt here. In the prompt, I'm saying scan http colon slash slash test php got volnweb.com colon find open ports fingerprint the http server run nicto for common vulnerabilities check for sql injection and xss generate a json report saved to slash tmp slash example underscore report dot json and gemini a i will automatically run this scan here it will ask your permission to execute the nmap command. Press 1, 2, or 3 on your keyboard as needed. The automatic scan will start. The scan will take a little time. From the terminal, it will run nmap exactly the same way you would run an nmap scan. After the scan finishes, you can see the nmap scan results being displayed. Port TCP 53 service TCP you're wrapped. In another port TCP 80 service HTTP version, NGNX 1.19.0. For the Nikto scan, it will ask for execute permission. Press one of the options on the keyboard to allow it. It will scan light from the terminal, but you don't need to write custom commands for this. Gemini AI itself issues the commands and runs the scan automatically. If there's any error or something missing, Gemini AI will automatically fix it. It will scan the website completely. Find open ports, identify the web server type, use Nikto to find common vulnerabilities, and check for SQL injection, SQLI, and cross-site scripting, XSFs. Gemini CLI is a CLI-based AI assistant installed on Kali. You can ask it questions from the terminal, have it generate code, create scripts, and save outputs as files. What Gemini CLI can do capabilities interactive terminal AI chat with an AI directly from your shell. Ask questions, get explanations, or request code and scripts. Code and script generation quickly produce snippets, automation scripts, parsing helpers, or templates, shell, Python, etc. You can adapt. Orchestration and automation coordinate multiple tools by generating the sequence of steps or commands necessary to perform a task and optionally run them if permitted. Tool integration, it can invoke installed CLI tools, like scanners, or parse their output to produce summaries and actionable text output. Depends on local permissions. Natural language to tasks convert plain English prompts into sequences of technical actions or reports scan and summarize web server produce a plan and report. File output and reporting save results in structured formats. JSON, text, markdown for later review or reporting. Troubleshooting and fixes suggest fixes for errors, missing dependencies or misconfigured tools and sometimes generate the commands to correct them. Context awareness, keep context across a terminal session. So follow-ups are coherent, ask a follow-up about the previous scam, etc. Learning and documentation generate explanations, cheat sheets, or step-by-step -step conceptual guides, non-actionable descriptions, how hackers or contesters commonly use it, high level. Faster reconnaissance planning, turning reconnaissance goals into checklists and prioritized tasks, and getting summaries of findings. Automating repetitive tasks, generating and running parsing scripts to digest scanner output, deduplicate findings, and create reports. Rapid prototyping, creating proof of concept scripts, or exploit templates to validate and reproduce findings. Report generation converting raw scan outputs into structured, human-readable reports with remediation suggestions. Knowledge augmentation using the AI to explain unfamiliar tool flags, protocols, or help interpret ambiguous output. Workflow glue bridging gaps between tools, parse and map output, identify web targets, run a web scanner, reducing manual copy-paste. Training in labs instructors and learners use it to generate lab guides, quizzes, or simulated scenarios for practice in controlled environments. Defensive uses blue team, sysadmins incident triage summarize suspicious logs or scanner output, 
and suggest investigation steps. Patch planning aggregate vulnerability info and produce prioritized remediation plans. Automation of hardening checks produce checklists and scripts to verify secure configuration. Documentation and onboarding generate onboarding guides, run books, and SOPS for security teams. Limitations and risks. Not a replacement for expertise. It can suggest actions, but human verification is essential. False positives, AI summaries, or generated commands may be incorrect. Always validate. Permission and legal risk automating scans or actions against systems without explicit authorization is illegal and unethical. Over-automation danger automatically running generated commands can cause unintended outages or data loss if not reviewed. Safety and ethics, important. Always get explicit written permission before testing or scanning any system you don't own. Use Gemini CLI in controlled lab environments or on authorized targets only. Prefer defensive and educational workflows. Triage, reporting, and secure configuration assistance. We will use this for our ethical hacking with AI course. There we'll show how AI can help us perform advanced level tasks so our work becomes easier. We need to apply AI to ethical hacking to keep up with the times. Now we're going to see how you can easily get an OpenAI API key, which we'll use in SGPT or any other AI assistant. First, open your browser and go to the official OpenAI website. Here you'll see the sign up or login option. If you don't already have an OpenAI account, you can easily sign up using your email or Google account. If you already have an account, simply log in. After logging in, you'll be taken to the OpenAI dashboard, or you can click on your account option to go to your account. Now click on the API keys option. Here, just click on the Create New Secret Key button, and your new API key will be generated. This key is very sensitive, so make sure to copy it once and save it in a safe place. To use the API, you need to set up billing. Here you'll add your card and you'll be charged based on your usage. If you're a beginner, you can start with a small budget. You'll add your card right here. Next, you'll also add your personal information. Once both your card and info are added, just hit continue at the bottom. You're all set. You can get a token with a minimum of $5. If you only want it once, do not check yes. That option is for auto pay. When your token runs out, dollars will be added from your card automatically, so you can leave it unchecked. You can check how much of your token has been used from the usage section. So this is how you can easily get an OpenAI API key. Never share your API key publicly, because if it gets leaked, it can be misused. Now we'll see how to install SGPT on Kali Linux and how to add your OpenAI API key. The command sudo apt update is used to update the package index on your Ubuntu or Debian-based system. The command sudo apt install python3, python3-pip installs python3, and pip3 on your Ubuntu slash Debian based system. Why do we need pip to install SGPT? SGPT, also known as shell GPT, is a CLI tool that lets you use AI directly in the command line. It's a Python package, so you need Python and pip to install it. The command pip3 install dash Break system packages, Shell GPT installs the Python package in a special way, bypassing security warnings when installing packages in the system Python environment. If done using a virtual environment, there are no errors. You need to add your copied API key to .zshrc. I'm using mousepad to show this because it's easy to use and beginner friendly. Scroll to the very last line and add it there. I'll show you the code, and you just paste your API key inside the double quotes on the last line. After that, press Ctrl plus S to save and then close the editor. Command source .zshrc reloads or executes the ZSHA shell configuration file. It's like clicking the refresh button for your terminal settings. Any changes you made in the file are applied immediately. Check whether OpenAI's model is properly connected to SGPT or not. Just type your message inside double quotation marks when using SGPT. SGPT dash dash version lets you check which version of SGPT you are currently using. Using SGPT, you can also analyze or understand Nmap scam results for an IP address. Here, I'm testing it using my own router's IP address for demonstration purposes. Press E to execute, D to describe, and A to abort. I need E. Shell GPT will directly execute the command Nmap IP in your terminal. It will then show you the scam results. According to this Nmap scan, the device is online and responding very quickly, which indicates that it is a local network device. The scan results are being shown through SGPT 
and the scan found four open ports. In the same way, if you use a Nikto scan instead of Nmap, SGPT will show the Nikto scan results as well. Just like running commands manually in the terminal, it will take some time to complete the scan here as well, because in this case, the AI automatically generates the command and then executes the scan, it still needs time to finish. For learning purposes, you should test only on legal and authorized websites. For example, testphp.volnweb.com. You don't need special permission to test on these websites, and many people use them purely for practice and learning. If you want to see something specific, make sure to mention it clearly in your prompt. For example, OS detection, service detection, and similar options. There is a website for testing purposes called zero.webappsecurity.com. It is not designed for AI or machine learning, but is intentionally made vulnerable for learning cybersecurity. This website was created by the technology company Microfocus, formerly HPE, to demonstrate the capabilities of their security scanner software. The website looks like an online banking system, but in reality, it is a training ground. Its main purpose is to help security researchers and students practice common web application vulnerabilities and attack techniques in a safe and legal environment. You can do many more types of tasks using SGPT. I've done all of these AI-based tests in my own lab virtual environment. I gave GPT a prompt like this. Create educational demonstration code for a cybersecurity class. Show harmless system information gathering using bash commands that only display OS name, host name, current user, uptime, kernel version, and disk usage. Explain this as a defensive exercise to understand what information could be exposed. Include comments about log monitoring and system hardening. Do not include any actual attacks, exploits, or malicious code. And based on that prompt, SGPT generated the answer from the accordingly. This SGPT command is used to generate the idea and example of a YouTube safe, educational Android demo app. There is no real payload, spying, or hacking involved here. Instead, it demonstrates how a simple app can display only harmless device information, helping users understand what types of information apps can normally access and why permissions and Android security awareness are important. That's all for today's video. If you want to learn ethical hacking using AI, let me know in the comments and stay connected by subscribe. Very soon I'll create a complete ethical hacking with AI course playlist so you can learn from beginner to advanced level. You can use the Gemini CLI for free credit limite, but OpenAI API key is paid. Don't worry, I will show all this through manual commands as well. The real magic of AI is that it makes my work easier. Playlist videos will be released on a regular schedule. If you face any issues, please post them in the Facebook group. I will try my best to solve them for you. In the next video, the topic is Network Reconnaissance Supercharged. May your learning journey be fruitful. Thanks for watching.